So, Siege has got me highly emotional this time of year. If you know of Siege, it has to be one of the most supported, most updated tactical shooters of all time, with things changing pretty much all the time. But as of typing this script, Ubisoft have released their Year 8 Season 4 panel for Operation Deep Freeze, and guys, <laughs> I truly wasn't ready for what I was bound to see. I actually pushed this video back by a whole day because I wanted to experience everything outside of just watching the panel. So without further ado, choose your operator and stretch your resolution as we talk about R6. And if you enjoy what you see today, be sure to sub to the channel. Okay, let's continue. And yes, before you say anything, I do play on a stretched res. 16x9 is absolutely horrible and you should feel bad if you use it. Anyways, I'm not going to cover necessarily everything, but more or less the parts that I deemed interesting. If you want to get more info on everything, I'll be leaving the link in the description and pinned comment. Before we actually get into it, the shield rework doesn't really make a lick of sense to me because they're just wanting to remove the ability to hip fire and the new map looks pretty damn good. The only thing that I will say about the new map is that everything just feels too damn claustrophobic. There's too many narrow hallways, too many turns, and the map itself just feels way too big for its own good. Then again, I've only been playing on it for a handful of hours at this point, and maybe I might warm up to it over time, but right now, eh, not really my cup of tea. I'm also not going to touch on them reworking the frag grenades to where you can't cook them anymore because I wholeheartedly believe that someone at Ubisoft saw the strat, hated the idea of it, and then decided to get rid of it. Now, let's get into the schmeat and taters of it all, starting with maybe one of the most hottest topics of the entire panel, player protection. They've been seeing how players are interacting with each other, and based off that, they can create a safe space for everyone. Honestly, making Siege a safe space is like taking every person and putting them on the moon. It is impossible. That's why in Season 4, the system is pretty much launching into a grace period, which may prompt one of these two screens to pop up. I'll touch on these in a bit. With the Reputation Center, you're pretty much going to be getting tips on how to get the best standing possible, personalized information tailored to you, and... <laughs> You know what, I'll just, I'll just let Roland tell you. You'll see things such as guides about how to spread positivity, as well as tips and tricks you can use in your matches, throughout the game, and even beyond to become great Siege community members and great Siege players. Yep, Rainbow Six Siege, a game that's known for having one of the most toxic communities on the planet, will teach you not how to be a toxic piece of shit. Let's say that you're just down to clown, right, and you don't care. Well, let's look at the screens that they're implementing. On the left, if your standing is increasing, the impact that's going to have is greatly increased rewards and faster progress for extra alpha packs. Not bad. It's actually worth being a decent human being at the end of the day as long as you hit an exemplary standing. Now, let's look at the right. If your reputation is dropping and hits dishonorable, while well, kiss ranked and standard goodbye, your progression is tanked severely, and if you manage to get into ranked, you ain't getting a damn thing. While I'll admit that this is going to encourage people to behave better and actually cooperate, I find that barely anyone wants to help out the team in fear that they're going to get reported for some asinine reason. Perfect example, when I play quick play, I give comms. It helps me learn the maps, helps me get used to it for ranked games, and I want to win so I can get the most out of my battle pass and renown boosters. Now, I've held randoms accountable for the mistakes that they make, or if they're being shitheads, I'll tell them to quit being annoying, but that's the issue. I get reported, and since the system is about as accurate as a stormtrooper, it thinks I'm misbehaving and it flags me for the behavior. I highly doubt that these reports are being gauged by actual people. They probably have an AI program doing it, but if this is gauged by an actual person, <laughs> y'all need to hire people that can get the full context of a situation because me telling a watered down Jinxie clone in quick match that he's being annoying shouldn't result in me being punished alongside him if he gets reported as well. Now we move into something that I saw and my jaw hit the goddamn floor. The Siege Marketplace. From the mouth of Ubisoft's business strategy director, Mohamed Behaneda, the marketplace will allow you to sell skins you no longer want and buy skins you can no longer get. And if you're lost on the concept, just think of the Steam Marketplace for games like CS2, Team Fortress 2, etc. Now, before a lot of the whales start seeing dollar signs in their eyes, everything will be done through R6 credits, which I'm low-key thankful for since you're not going to see anyone charging $1,000 for a damn common skin from year three. Time to move into the onboarding section and start out with something that I actually kind of like the idea of, the versus AI playlist. Technical architect Alex Rusby tells us that this mode pins you against AI defenders on Clubhouse and the bomb mode with AI defenders mimicking the actions of players 
all the way down to power angles and gadget strats. There will also be two difficulty levels, one meant for beginners of R6 and one meant as a warm up for advanced players. Alex also states that coming later in Season 4, there will be more maps, more operators for the AI to choose from, and being able to play as the defenders. I tried playing this mode in the playtest server, and uh, <laughs> yeah, it went great. The next thing, I'm... I'm just going to let this live reaction tell you everything you need to know. So you just saw a lot of exciting stuff when it comes to the AI playlist and all of the onboarding features that we're introducing this year. Come on, Alex, lay it on this us. This does come to a difficult conversation when it comes to situations and training grounds in the game. We'll be removing situations and training grounds, or as some others call it, T-Hunt, from the game. This Bruh. is a very difficult decision. No way. Decisions. We're introducing no. a lot of tools today <laughs> that teach the player. No the fucking way, dude. It... Yep, they're removing situations in T Hunt. The situations thing I'm not too hurt about, but T Hunt? <laughs> That's absolutely insane. Much like everyone else, I've used T Hunt as a means of warming up for as long as I can remember. And while I understand that they're going to be bringing in newer and somewhat better ways to warm up, I just can't believe that they're taking away something that's been in the game since day one. I'm gonna quickly skip over the controller improvements and the battle pass update and get straight into the new operator, Tuberau. His special ability allows this two speed two armor operator to carry up to four Zoto canisters, which freezes a pretty good sized area for about 12 seconds. If you want a reference as to how much it can cover, it can easily cover up to two reinforced walls. The whole point of this ability is to pretty much freeze anything that the attackers throw your way, either that be a thermite, an ace, whatever it may be. Also as an attacker, not only is it gonna be like walking through barbed wire, but you'll also be leaving visible footprints for the defenders above and below you. Pair that with the C4 that he can use, and you're gonna have a pretty bad day. The two weapons that Tuberow has is an MPX and surprisingly enough, the AR-1550 aka Maverick's weapon. The fact that we're getting both the MPX and the AR-1550 is a really interesting decision that Ubisoft made. I know one of the weapons is meant for people who love to roam, and another one is for the people who love to anchor, but I personally think the AR-15 is going to get outchosen about 90% of the time. It has a 1.5 time scope and you slap a compensator on that bitch and it is not flinching no matter how fast you shoot it. His secondary is also the P226 MK25 pistol, which is decent, I think. I don't really use secondaries in Siege unless it's a shotgun, so. Sorry. In the panel, Ubisoft touts that you can use Tuberau alongside Fenrir and Ella to create a devastating combination, which if you're able to find people to run all three of those operators, by all means do it, because that's going to be one hell of a combo for them to break through. They also say that operators like Twitch and Zero can destroy the canisters if you're not willing to wait, which has me wondering if they use those two as examples or if they can only use those two ops to take it out. I know it sounds like a dumb question because people are going to say, oh, well, what about Thatcher? Listen, I don't know. The guy's only been in the game for like, what, two days at this point? The only thing that they show after that are Street Fighter Elite skins for Ying and Grimm, which I don't really care about. It's cool, don't get me wrong, but not something that piqued my interest. And again, if you're wanting to see the whole panel or even get more information about what's going on, I'm leaving the links down below. For my final thoughts, I think Year 8 Season 4 is gearing us for some major changes that are going to come to Year 9. Think about it. This year has given us some pretty serious reworks and changes probably on the same level as what we saw last year. In my honest opinion, the new operator is going to be a growing pain to learn because we haven't really had anything like this in the game yet, but if used correctly, he's going to be an absolute unit of an operator without a doubt. I'm not going to be surprised if he gets nerfed multiple times before Ubisoft just lets him be. You know, I hate to say it, but this new generation of Siege players are eating really well in Season 4. Better than what I did when I first started in Year 1, when I got deep into the game in Year 5, and now that I'm coming back into it as serious as I am in year eight. You know, playing around with the new features, it's going to take some time for me to get used to personally, but I don't think their target audience are for people like me that have a level of understanding with the game. I think it's more or less meant for the people that either haven't played this game in ages or haven't played the game at all. And if that's you, now is the best time to get back into it. Understandably so, people aren't happy with the direction that Siege has been going and they wish things could go back to the way it used to be. I think Ubisoft needs to add an OG mode where it strips everything down to the vanilla version of Siege, but I know that's more than likely not gonna happen. The reason I say that is because the resources that would be used to make it happen is insane. We're talking about digging up eight years worth of updates and reworks, 
to restore the game to a state that a lot of people want to go back to. Plus, it's just the mindset that they've always got to be progressively chasing new money. And it sounds greedy, but if a company isn't making money, a company isn't surviving. All we got to do is be thankful that Ubisoft have managed to support this game as long as they have because with this new season coming in, I'm beyond excited to see what's coming in year 9. Now I turn the mic to you. Let me know down below what you think about all the new changes coming to R6. And while you're down there, go ahead and smash that like button and wiggle that sub button all so YouTube can show you my content free of charge. Also, consider becoming a member of the channel. It's $3 a month and it all goes back into the channel one way or another. Shout out to the current members. Y'all are absolute legends. This is Sir Blackout signing off to join into sight and still eat shit because no one gave a call out. <sighs> Welcome to Siege. Ah, uh, later.